Here we go. This is week seven. Yes. Of a podcast. Yes. Of the crazy, yeah. beautiful life podcast series. So, yes. hey, week seven. Thank and we, you, Lord. <laughs> listen. Thank you, Dad. If it had not been, it never would have made. I'm just kidding. But um, it's just me, Mom, and Kiara today, yes. which is <laughs> the Powerpuff Girls. Woo! <laughs> Um, and we have a really dope show today because we are going to be talking about some of, I'm asking mom and Kiara, and I'm sorry Kiara, I should have asked you guys before this, what you guys are reading or during this time, because, you know, we've, we're constantly sharing just our journey and where we are and what we're going through, and, um, one of the things that was, that I've been doing, reading some different books, some books that have really bless me and giving me different perspective which is something we'll talk about um one of those big things that god can do for us is just changing altering our perspective on things so before we get started we're gonna pray um you guys ready yeah. all right heavenly father we thank you so much for the opportunity for us to just be together again um whether it be via telephone or face to face we just thank you for the opportunity that we are able to speak to each other again and to come together in this way. Yes. Um, we know that every breath that we are given was a gift of grace from you. So we definitely appreciate it and we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to bless us and have us here and walking this out. And we just ask that you go with us on this journey. We ask that you be here, show up, allow the Holy Spirit to drop down and just show up in this podcast here today. Let you just come on and speak, speak through us. Let us know what it is you want us to be focused on, what it is you would like us, to, which way you would like us to be moving. Um, we thank you as always for our health, our family, just the joy that you have allowed in this season in your favor. Um, we can't say thank you enough and of course your love your overwhelming love we thank you so much so in jesus name we pray name. amen amen all righty so ladies so today because i've gotten some really good reads this week and since i haven't gotten to talk to you but just this week i already i have been reading the power of praise and worship by dr miles monroe and that book has been blessing me which mom is mom's book she allowed me to um borrow it and she said when i picked it up off the shelf she was like oh you're gonna love that book mm -hmm. and it really is and it just it's a book that talks about the fact of more of god wanting this relationship with us but that praise and worship being where we usher him in and it's how we bring his presence into us is through our praise and worship and just delving into what does that really mean what does praise look like what is what is the root of it and it's basically your endorsement for god of you saying this is what god has done for me and just this these are the reasons why i continue to speak his name and this actually this morning what i read made me smile so big because you know as you get deeper and deeper as you start to draw closer and closer to the lord you find that in every situation and almost every moment of life you're thinking like oh well what did god say about this and sometimes it makes you feel weird especially in you know in certain spaces where they're like well this you know i don't know it's not always about god it's what you think sometimes and you're like well for some reason i'm trying to i'm turning towards what does he think and it's just because that relationship is growing closer and closer in the book it talked about how as your relationship grows you will. He was like, every moment that you'll find yourself speaking the name of the Lord more and more and more. And it's not that you're trying to beat people down with, you know, like, what did God say about it? Did you look at the Lord? No, it's not even that. It's just this is where you're really walking and being earnest and transparent with it and being like, wow, well, this is what he gave me in that. And just acknowledging him in it. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, wow, okay, okay. Um, but the other books that I have gotten are guests from last week. Yes! Karen Carpenter! Yes! Not to be confused with the songstress. 
<laughs> this one is a pastor and now an author. I got the Daughters of Dominion and I read chapter one and I was just in awe that Karen, my good friend and my sister, is allowing God to use her to tell her story earnestly and just to show other young ladies that in whatever it is you're walking in, especially like I said, once he gives you deliverance, don't ever feel ashamed to tell your story because he will pull a message out of your mess. And I, I said to my mom, I said, yeah, like he gave me deliverance from that wig five minutes ago. Because I had a wig on, but I took it off because I was like, what is the point? I'm hot. It's itchy. Oh deliverance. goodness. And I didn't even know this. Okay. This is why as soon as Kiara is back in the building, we will be doing video because some of this stuff you just got to see. Um, and then the last two books I got, Relational Intelligence from Darius Daniels. I've been talking about this book for a long time. For a long time and I've gotten into it. Girl. Yes, I'm, and I'm several chapters in. And he really is breaking down and it's eye-opening to look at the fact that, you know, the greatest gifts, again, you talk back to that double-edged sword, relationships. They can be the greatest gift or they can be a weapon of mass destruction, especially when you have people placed in categories that they don't belong. Um, it's not always the people. Sometimes you set expectations for someone who shouldn't even be in that category. So it's just allowing God up in there. And what does he say about that? How did Jesus show us his example of relational intelligence when dealing with those who are closest to him? That book is dope. Um, and then the book that's on the way, David, everybody say David, <laughs> hey, relationship goals from Pastor Michael Todd, yes, yes. <laughs> shout out once again, Transformation Nation, Pastor Michael Todd, we saw you on Good Morning America, shining, shining, shining. I saw it, and I was like, look at God showing out, look at God showing out, but yeah, so I like to hear... And again, from our listeners, if you have books that you're reading, that you're like, hey, you guys, or books that you've read in the past, like, I know, The Blessed, the blessed Life is another one mm -hmm. that I read that was, like, mind-blowing. Mom has read five billion books, so she could be on there all day. Um, but if you have something that you're reading right now, or just books that you're like, hey, this really helped me, um, definitely share. So, ladies, do you guys... Oh. Um, Open the floor to y'all. Um, since I wasn't aware that we I know were they were not prepared this, for the um, I know a couple books have come up this past week just because of what I've been thinking about and um, different things and different books that have blessed me. Um, one was my brain. <laughs> mm. Who switched my brain? Um, and that is by Dr. Caroline Leaf. Okay. Um, the reason why I got her book was that I had saw her on a podcast with Taffy Dollar. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I've seen um, Dr. Caroline Leaf several different places. Um, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Hey, um, FBCG. She's, she's been, been pretty much all over. But the thing that got me was... I became um, relational with Dr. Caroline Leaf through her book um, back in 2012, 2011, 2012. But it was before I wrote my book. Okay. And, um, and her book was very inspirational for me in understanding how you know, our brain functions and, okay. and different things like that and the way that God created us with our brain the way that it is. Mm -hmm. um, the other book um, that I've actually been reading now. Oh my gosh, y'all, um, this book is thick. Also is, can be used as a weapon. <laughs> I know we don't fight against flesh and blood, but if you do <laughs> have a... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> actually, this is... this. Well, when... I started reading these books, and all of them are like about this big. Um, I started reading it. How big is this big? Uh, you know, over <laughs> yeah. Audio, I can't really it's, know. It's, How many pages? It's 
600 and... It's a thick book. It's a thick book. 657 pages long. But it is a children's... It was a children's book, but as I started reading it, and this is... How many editions? This is... Um, hmm... Because we've read all of her books from the So it's beginning. a series of books. It is a series of books. Um, Ginny L. Cote. And it's a historical book. But what she has done, she has traveled and gained awareness of the areas, uh, the people, um, the types of uh, living styles, the culture, um, and brought out um, unique things that she has found out which are truths um, and this goes all the way back to the ark mm. um, she started with the ark and now she's up to the American mm. um, history and the book that we're reading now is the declaration the sword and the spy what's the name of the series the series is epic order of the seven okay so and the seven are animals animals running through the story and seeing things happening helping you know in different areas okay. um but it's it's really good it's really good but that's where i am now and yes i do have my daughters of dominion book hey. yes with karen <laughs> and different things um i know patrice had told me earlier that um, yeah, Mom, we're going to be talking about your book, which I did not know, but <laughs> my book, the title of it is Call Me Uncle Tom, question mark. And why is it a question? It's because the person, Uncle Tom, the character Uncle Tom in Uncle Tom's Cabin was actually a depiction of Christ, and that is what was seen by the author. Mm. and the de depiction that we see is of Christ. Yeah. So the reason why I said call me Uncle Tom is because I'm following Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's what the book is about, yeah. to think about. Um, you know... And before we get into your book, though... Yeah. Kiara, do you have yours? Because I'm going to let Mom actually get into the background behind her book and, like... Because that's what... Um, we're do best. I have my books or do I have mom's book? <laughs> <laughs> do you have both? <laughs> do, do I have what? Do you have any books that you'd like to share that... Yes, <laughs> I do, I do. So my books are kind of split into three categories. I have um, two books that are Christian-based books that I'm reading um, and two books that are, well, I guess three books that are Christian-based, one that is more uh, philosophically based, but an awesome book to read, too, that actually brings you back to your faith. And then I also have two business-like books I'm reading, too, that are um, just really good from looking at people from an emotional standpoint and supporting them, which also reflects my morals and my, my Christian faith as well, and just how, to, how to take care of others and how to take care of people around you. Mm -hmm. So... My Christian-based book, number one, is, of course, Fearless Parenting, which is a book I'm reading with my small group. Um, we get together every Monday over Zoom before everything crashed. We actually are meeting in person. Yeah. Um, it's just a group of parents who get together, and it's just um, a wonderful book. Mom actually stopped in on one of our meetings one week, which was great. But we basically just, like, kind of share what we're going through with our kids and how the book has reflected how uh, we are trying to be fearless parents in this very uncertain world um, and fearlessly parent our children to grow closer to God. So that is a great book if you're trying to uh, do that yourself. Um, awesome. But also every day my mom got me a book called Jesus is Calling. It is a great daily devotional. Um, the way that it's written, I actually got this book before when I was going through a really tough time in my life. And the way that it's written is as if Jesus is actually talking to you, and then they have scriptures below that back what the, mm. um, the information above talks about. So that is an awesome um, devotional that helps me every morning start my day with God. Um, mm. Quick ones, just go through. So, of course, The Noticer is a great book I'm sharing. Yeah. Um, 
my mom brought this to us. It's by Andy Andrews. Mm-hmm. This is such a cool book because it shifts your perception yeah. on um, so many different things and just helps you to really have a more positive view of so many things. So from a, an emotional um, and spiritual standpoint, just a really good reread to kind of refocus yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad, on the other hand, um, he brought my attention to a book called Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. Now, this book what? is actually written by a man who is um, it's written from his perceptions from when he was in the Holocaust. And what I love about this book is even though he's in a situation like being in the Holocaust, he's able to really refocus his faith um, mm-hmm. and realize that his faith can help him through such a difficult situation as that. Mm. Um, so, in the current <laughs> yeah. that we're in, it's a great book to pick up and to, to read through. Um, and my last two, which are really quick, is um, The Power of Moments by Chip Heath and Dan Hurt. This is a, a great book. I, I mentioned it before on our podcast, but this book is awesome um, in thinking about the transitions that happen in life for people and just ways to really think about how to make moments special. And at this point in time, again, when we are in a pandemic and you can't be around the people you love, um, that is a great book. And the last one I have is um, Creating Magic. The Creating Magic is actually written by Lee Cockrell, who's the former executive vice president of operations for Walt Disney World Resort. And um, it kind of mirrors a little bit of the Love Languages books in a way, because it just looks at showing appreciation for people um, in lots of different ways, and how Disney World has looked at doing that, and um, just helps you to think about from a business perspective ways you can do that for your colleagues. So, oh, cool. you so much time, guys, but those are... <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> good, that's good. Pick books up and read them a little bit, so I'm kind of reading multiple books right right, right? kind of going through I mean like uh, diving in to a little bit but what was the book that dad got you can you give me that name one more time the one that dad gave, gave to me yeah the one that he pointed me to yeah that one is Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel it's a very famous book that's often quoted um and just to kind of give you an idea, there's one moment in the book where he is in the camp and um, is facing a really tough day, as every day in the concentration camp you can realize could be, and the memories of his wife are helping him to get through that day. Mm-hmm. So just kind of taking his mind off of the current situation and taking it towards her, even though she's already passed away. Mm-hmm. So, uh, But he doesn't know that at that time. Mm-hmm. So it's just like a very... It's a very interesting story just to read through, and obviously it was such a, a horrible time for people to have to go through, so to get a first-hand account of how someone was able to get through that, right. um, helps to think about the resilience that God has placed in all of us to get through some of the rough things that we, um, we're all facing right now. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting, because that makes me think of Corey Ten Boom's book, The Hiding Place, um, which is a very um, good book. Corey Ten Boom and her life, um, she lived her life to share what God had given her, how God had awakened her to forgiveness mm. and for everyone and how God loves us and the grace of God. Oh, it's she, oh, it's such a beautiful character, a very humble character. Mm. Um, it, yeah, but Corey Ten Boom, um, her book, The Hiding Place, which is about her life and um, how her and her sister and her parents, and I forgot who else it was that was in the house because they were keeping, um, they were hiding Jews inside of their house. Um, they were Dutch, um, but they you know, brought the Jews in and they had a hiding place for them mm. in the house and were captured and, and through the Holocaust experience and what all happened with Corey, her sister, and her family. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. So, but, yeah. Cool. Cool, yeah. cool. Really, really dope. All these dope reads and, again, Mom is about to get into her, her book and how all of these books and these authors... Um, 
have allowed the Lord to use them to help just shift that lens on our perspective. Um, and so, and mom, I would like you to really share because I know a lot of people have been touched by your book. Um, I had one friend in particular that I think I, I was reading it and I had gone to her house and again, I was in a whole, a totally different space than I am now. So I was just reading it cause I'm like, this is my mom's book. So, you know, and it was Sarita. She sat down and read it and was like, your mom's book is amazing. She read it before I did. Wow. And I was like, what? She was like, your mom's story is amazing. And so I'd like you to just share a little bit about your journey to writing the book. And you gave them about, and I think that's important because a lot of people shy away from the title. Yeah. The title yeah. It yeah. throws a lot of people off and they're like, because we have, again, preconceived notions about who Uncle Tom is. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in the African American culture, mm -hmm. to Uncle Tom, to be called an Uncle Tom is like, what? Yeah. So to actually shift the perspective there. Yeah. yeah. Um, is big and to be able to receive it as a compliment instead of a demeaning um, uh, disrespectful tone um, and it was changed it was changed in my life mm -hmm. um, and, and it did cause me I, actually the title came up as I was walking with my daughter Mary because we would take several walks <laughs> and um, while we were walking and we were talking it just came to me you know wow to be called Uncle Tom means to be called a follower of Christ Wow! and I said why wouldn't I want to be called that mm. and so I, I said the title should be call me, call me Uncle, Uncle Tom. Tom and then question mark because it was a question why mm -hmm. would anybody want to be called Uncle Tom and the answer was given mm -hmm. as I continued to walk my life out mm -hmm. and um, God has just opened my eyes just to realize that we are not um, separated by the colors of our skin Amen. that we are all one because we're all children of who who created us mm -hmm. it is our God who created us and it says in his word you know so far as if we look to him and accept him as our father then he's our father mm -hmm. other than that he is our all over the world he is our creator mm -hmm. um, there's nobody who is exactly the same as someone else on this earth right um, each fingerprint is different mm -hmm. um, we talked about that that's yeah. a, one of the hard one of the hardest things for people that we all struggle with is the fact that we're all special but no better than you're all special but no better than mm -hmm. and so that that's what I mean, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's such a blessing, and like, like I said, this this book is about my life. It's about my life from when I was younger, um, being brought up, which really keys into uh, share on Facebook. Um, it's um, Rosie's husband, mm. and um, Craig, I think his name is. Um, and he, Rosie was your pastor's daughter yes in the church you grew up in yes and she played the piano for our choir and um, he now or you know he was I'm, I'm not exactly sure so far as the setup now but he um, was the um, the what do you call him? The person in the lead of the choir. Oh, choir director. The choir director. Yes. <laughs> she was waving her hand. I was yeah, like, he was I the person to, that. He was the person. Band he people. He directed the <laughs> choir. Yes. And he posted some pictures on Facebook, and there there were some pictures of the choir. Oh, uh, those pictures. When it was younger, and that was when I was in the choir. And not with him as director, because then Rosie was younger. Yeah, I was going to say, wait a minute. younger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Mm, take a sip of this tea. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and there was a picture when I was really young. And I was standing up there, you know, just standing up there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I had never seen that picture before. 
but I, I, once again, I thanked him on Facebook for sharing it. I thank him again because it really touched me. Hmm. Because to see myself when I was younger, I realized something. I realized that I wasn't walking around with an attitude of, oh, this is God, this is God. No, <laughs> um, I was living through it. And at that time, that point in time, was around the time that my grandmother had passed. And I did not go through a period of time of, oh no, where did grandma go? Mm -hmm. It was more of a knowing and just knowing that she has gone to heaven. Mm -hmm. And I realized that when I looked at my picture and that's something um, that is very strong in my spirit. Yeah. So far as ones who have accepted Christ and who are living out the love of Christ for everyone. And, and when they go, I know it's like a knowing. Yeah. A knowing. Yeah. You know, but anyway, thank you again, <laughs> Craig. And, um, but my book, as I said, I can't really go too far into description with it. Um, but I can tell you, it is about my life and my life as a child growing up, um, being caught in situations to make me think, who am I? Mm. Um, like when I was playing with my nephew um, on the front lawn of our house and uh, a kid came up and said something about the white kid and I was like what you know mm -hmm. like what are you talking about because this is family you know you know when you're playing with family yeah and then somebody comes up and they say Who's that white kid? And I let's go, see, back then, and then her nephew, Austin, you're talking about Austin. Yeah, he is my my aunt Barb is white, and my uncle, of course, is African American. Yeah, so my Austin brother. is super fair. He looks like if you saw him, you'd be like, oh, the white dude. Yeah, but he's actually mixed. Um, <laughs> but back then, and even today, the kids still, you know, yeah. I know Kiara's gone through Ari and me with Kayla, and London, and Jackson. Um, more with Kayla. Um, Jackson is still very young. But, yeah, kids kids are different. And basically, kids are kind of a reflection of their parents, a reflection yeah. of what they're, they're living, which is so funny because, as we learned, we're striving to be a reflection of our father. Mm, um, so, yeah. Yeah, and it's just that realization um, and, you know, the catches the glitches in life um, that catch us. And that's the thing, the main thing for the writing of my book is my children and they're my grandchildren. I look at my grandchildren and they're the love of my life. Yeah. And to be in a position to try and figure out who I am, mm not by the color of your skin. Yeah. I don't want you to be in that position. So that's what the book was written by. The force of the book was driven by my grandchildren. Mm. And realizing that here they are growing up in a world of what I saw at that point in time of you're black, you're white, mm -hmm. you got this, you got that, but isn't it something with this pandemic hmm. that now we're all coming to a plateau that we're all human beings? Yeah. Yeah. Slowly and slowly we are all all over this world experiencing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we're all humans being mm -hmm. the way that we are. Yeah. And we're created wonderfully and beautifully. So to come together and realize that. Amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, so we will definitely, I. We'll talk more about it. Yes. Again. And I have to go back and I actually have to re read mom's book because it's been 
years now since I read the well, book. It's but about we, your life too, so. what? <laughs> it's last time that I read mom's book, I was actually pregnant, and I don't know if you remember this mom because it was around the time that you actually had your stroke. <laughs> um, but I remember calling you in tears. Because I was reading the part about Mary being born, um, and I was right around that that path or that time in my pregnancy of when she was born, and this just like huge fear fear came over me, and I called you and I was like, oh my gosh, and readers, I shouldn't be reading that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, but you, you were just so kind and just with me, and you know, and just helped me to be reminded that, and you know, that was it was not a norm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, that was one of the things that I think I love about your stories. There's so many things that that are both not norm and norm, because they're not norm as far as the world is concerned, but as far as God is concerned, He does these great miracles and these great things in people's lives all the time. And just to see how you were so real and trusting in God, even when you were unsure about trusting in God. Because I, I love that part, kind of that came out of your story, too, is that you were very real about it. That there were some times that you were like, I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I'm going to trust anyway. Yeah. Um, and just having that kind of pure faith really helped me in my journey with my faith, too. So I really love being able to look back on that. Not so, you know, it's not so exciting to see some of the less flattering parts of my life displayed um, in the book, but it's all real. And yeah. It all happens, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a real part of the, it's all good. Part of the journey. Part of the journey. Yeah, and understanding, I know that one of our episodes that kind of, kind of took off <laughs> a little bit on talking about walking with my limp, and I was thinking about the picture um, Craig, that you had posted, um, it, it was like this overwhelming feeling that I had of me walking through my life, and that is in that book, but mm. just to understand the emotional outbreak, it mm-hmm. is from my walk, and it's truth, walking with my limp, knowing that God has given me everything that I need. Amen. Amen. Well, this week, (laughs) this week has been a really good, a really good week. A really good week. Um, Some, as always, hills and valleys. Hills and valleys. Yes. Um, But there was a few things that came out of it this week the scripture that kept coming up for me was Romans 8 31 if God be for us who can be against us if God be for us who can be against us and it came out again you know I was talking about confirmation where it comes out um mom just said it I don't know where we were talking and you said it but before that whatever I had watched from the morning it was said there um and then I, I might have been scrolling or something. It came up several times. To the point that you're like, okay, I get it. You're for me. Who can be against me? Who? Who? Um, and then this morning, my devotional went into what is resting on the throne of your heart. And I started thinking about this message that I watched. And I think it was Pastor Michael Todd. It might have been Darius Daniels. But they went into the fact that the throne of your heart is not a couch. It's not even a love seat. Only one can sit there. So whatever you are focused on, whatever you are worried about, whatever has your attention is what's sitting on the throne. And I was like, wow. And they were like, what ends up happening is because that is where your focus, your worry, you end up worshiping that. So if it is, and I was thinking about that in this time. Of what we're going through <laughs> and going off of King David I'm not gonna say the name but I'll say we're going through a time where there is a sickness and an illness in the land but just like how David would not say Goliath's name he never talked about how big Goliath was he called him an uncircumcised Philistine because yes he clearly saw but what he focused on was how big his God was and I was like wow so it's the whole thing of God shifting your focus he said if you're constantly focused on your problem if you're constantly focused on an illness 
if you're constantly focused on, oh my gosh, this issue, this issue, this issue, that issue is sitting on your throne, on the throne of your heart. Yeah. Once you shift your focus back to the fact that no matter what it is, my God is bigger, my God is greater. Mm -hmm. Unless he said several times in the Bible, when did I become weak? Mm -hmm. God is bigger than it. And then, I, of course, Psalms 47, God reigns over all nations. Mm -hmm. I have got Psalms 30, 47 for you guys today, and also Isaiah 40. So, Psalms 47 says, Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a joyful voice, for the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us. He chose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God went up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his throne, on his holy throne. The princes of people are gathered together, even people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. So he keeps saying in that verse, not only praise the Lord, but that God rules it all. He rules it all. He reigns over it all. Um, and as we said before, nothing happens that he didn't allow. We're not saying that he did, you know, whatever happened. Oh, so God did this? No, but he allowed it. Mm -hmm. Nothing moves. And there is a peace and a comfort in knowing that, number one, because what you have for me is good. And I know your plans for me. And they're not plans to harm, to harm me. Mm -hmm. The one who has these plans for me is also the one who nothing moves unless he allows it, mm -hmm. there's a comfort in that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, which I had a moment, I was standing out on my porch, and the wind was just howling away, and I just started staring at the wind, and I was like, this doesn't move unless you say so. And then the trees shifted the other way, and I was like, what kind of power is that? Just watching these trees just like, whoo, I was like, the chew just go that way, and the wind goes that way, go that way, and the wind goes that way. All right, that's enough. And it stops. What kind of, it's, it's mind-boggling. No, we can't understand it all, because it is mind-blowing to think about having that kind of power. I'm glad I don't have it. Well, I'm glad that I don't. Well, we... I mean, he gives us the power, but I'm... The authority. I'm glad that I am not God. Yeah. I will say that. <laughs> I, I don't see. Ooh, okay. He is our father. I'm glad he is God. He is our father. He is our father. Yes, jump in and anytime, ladies, you're like, well, wait a minute. No. <laughs> so, but <laughs> Isaiah 40 is comfort for God's people. Comfort, oh, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and cry to her. That her warfare has ended and her iniquity has been pardoned. And she has received of the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. Isaiah 40, is there a certain scripture or all of Isaiah? All of Isaiah 40. And I started at the beginning and I stopped around. Well, actually, I was skipping all through it. So I will just say I'll put Isaiah 40 in the... You'll um, put the scriptures in. Yeah, okay. Isaiah 40. Um, but right there where it says... You know, her warfare has ended and the iniquity has been pardoned. She's received of the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. I think about all of my sisters in Christ who are coming out with their stories of just their journeys, where they've been, where God has brought them from, and all that he has been blessing them and how he is just using them to touch others, to help others, to bring others out of bondage. And they are receiving double for everything that they've been through. They are opening their hands and their hearts to that, and they're receiving it. 
um, the voice of him who cries out, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness, make straight in the desert a highway for all God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low and let the rough ground become a plain and the rough plain places a plain. Then the Lord, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry out? All flesh is grass and all of it loveliness is as the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades because the spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Um, just a lot. And you know what? I'm not even going to go into all of Isaiah 40 because I got so much out of it. It was just like, it was like, like eating a steak or something, you know, like it was so much, there was so much meat there. And again, the blessing in all this is everything that we read and we present to you guys, you could go into it and God could give you something totally different. And that's dope. And that's for you, that's for your journey. All I can give you is what he gave me out of it. Um, but in this, he was just really, really, again, showing his power, his might, and how he really, really cares and is there. Um, hmm. He... Wow. But there was a lot there. And then... The last I'm going to speak on is a real quick situation. Me, my dad, my youngest daughter, <laughs> she got in some trouble this week, but my dad and I were talking, and as we were talking, he started to open up to me about the fact of, he really got choked up talking about my brother. And I shared with him that this week, years and years ago, Kiara, you probably remember, when we were younger, we went to Martin Luther King's um, childhood home. And for some reason, for me, Mo, and Kiara, it tickled us that Martin Luther King, at the dinner table, when they would say, okay, what Bible verse are you guys, what Bible verse did you learn today, that Martin Luther would often say, Jesus wept, because he would forget, or he just wouldn't do it. And we thought that was just hilarious. Well, I never really dove into or knew why Jesus wept. So, when Pastor Stephen Furtick was talking this week, and he said, that Jesus wept, he was weeping over Lazarus, hit me like really, really wow. He was like, so he wasn't weeping because I was like, wait, he brought Lazarus back from the dead. He said, it wasn't the fact that Lazarus had died and that he'd never see him again. He was weeping because he lost him. And so as my dad was sitting there and he was just like, you know, I, I just can't, um, you know, bear to lose anyone else right now. And he was just really opening up and sharing. And I said, Dad, you know, when Jesus wept over Lazarus, he showed us that in, you know, that he was man and God in one, that he got it. He got it. Just because we know that we will see you again does not mean that we don't weep. He wept because he lost him. Again, he stood in your shoes and he totally gets it. He totally gets it. And so that for me was just like, wow. And I mean, on a totally different level because it was like, literally Jesus. <laughs> he went we're like, wait, Lazarus, get up. He's like, oh, whew, let me stop crying. Mm -hmm. Boy, I lost you. But I mean, he understands that emotion and what it is to lose. I mean, it's not just losing people. And as we said, some people... You experience grief over loss of jobs, over loss of homes. I mean, you experience grief over these things. Um, and so it's okay to be like, okay, I am kind of sad. And it's not because I can't, God can't bless me. And, and even with my brother, it's not because I don't know that I will see him again. I cry because I lost him for this period of time, you know? So... That was, that was it for me, guys. I know that was it. was like a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you guys have scriptures that you'd like to share, I would love to hear them. Kiara? 
Kelly? Um, I did have, for me this week, it was more of, like, the whole, in social media, um, being able to, just communicating with others, um, uh, most who know me know that I have a very unique sense of humor, yeah. um, and I found that several times this week, the medium that I have to express that humor, um, did not properly express it, and so people weren't really getting some of the jokes that I was making. The yeah. one thing that God brought to me was that if my um, fear of displeasing people hmm. is put, put like on the forefront, then that actually puts me in bondage to them. Yep. Um, and will change like the way I act or who I am as a person. And that really starts to become a primary focus, whether it be sense of humor or trying to get validation hmm. um, through social media or through people. If you don't see these people, but like those are people who you're putting things out to, maybe they're pictures of yourself or of your family or meals that you're cooking or whatever that might be, um, that's our way of kind of communicating with the outside world right now. So the verse that God um, brought to me was, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. And that is Proverbs twenty nine twenty five. Um, and it just was really eye opening to me because of what I've been experiencing. There have been so many moments where I've been like, Oh, this is gonna be so funny and I'll put it into a form where I'll put it out there and I'll get like no responses <laughs> and it has had a like effect on me I'm like, Well, I thought that was funny and I thought that would bring people joy <laughs> But maybe like maybe people didn't see it or maybe right, it right. was funny. Um but the verse that spoke comfort to me that I shouldn't be looking for that validation from mm. those individuals because that will cause me to continue to see myself or through that. Yeah. And that is not where my self worth comes from. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm. And mom, do you have anything? I oh yeah. <laughs> um the scripture, I had two scriptures. One was Ephesians 4, 23, where it states, And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, mm. having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new nature, the regenerate self, created in God's image, Godlike in true righteousness and holiness. So that one is once again the mind. Mm -hmm. Um choosing. I, I, I can choose. You know, it's that thing. Yeah. I can choose. Um to be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. Choosing, mm -hmm. choosing something, a different way of thinking about something, yeah, actually changes the direction of where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So, um, that that was pretty awesome. And Second Corinthians four, Second Corinthians four, not First Corinthians. Second Corinthians four, eight and nine, which states here it is. Okay. We are hedged in, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but not cramped or crushed. Hmm. We suffer embarrassments and are perplexed and unable to find a way out, but not driven to despair. We are pursued, persecuted, and hard driven, but not deserted to stand alone. We are struck down to the ground, but never struck out Amen. and destroyed. And what I wrote here in my notes is the way we respond, the way we respond, how do I choose to respond? Yeah. Be of good cheer. Because Jesus 
has already fought the battle. Amen. Amen. And um, just everything that we are all going through at this time, it's not just me. Yeah. Um, it is all of us. And I do, <laughs> I do care about all of us yeah because we are all going through it and we're going through it trying to handle things in different ways because we've been taught this and this and this and you know um but we're here in this space together yeah um so yeah i just those scriptures hit and, me. kiara i'm sorry did you have any other scriptures i didn't want to cut you off i was like wait did kiara have anything else <laughs> no no that was okay. the only scripture that i i had time but when mommy was reading it reminded me of a scripture that i did get earlier this week which is second corinthians 4 16 through 18 therefore do not lose heart so outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Mm. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving this for mm. us, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So mm. we fix our eyes not on what is seen, only what is unseen. Mm -hmm. But what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Amen. 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 Yeah, we definitely had to talk about that this week too about the things that you don't see and Which are greater. and I think that I don't know who it was I was speaking about that the fact that if if anything in the season we have learned that it's the things that are unseen they're like this virus the virus thing you can't see you cannot see it and it's moving the world there yeah. do this do that and you can't see it can't see it can't um, see it no but so. one is above all of it, and that is our God, our Father. His name is above every other name, and that name of COVID-19 is under the name of God. Mm. So my Father, that's my Father. So I have confidence in my Father more than I have confidence in COVID-19, and I thank Him. Mm -mm -mm. I thank Him. Because... Our lives are forever. This life is temporary. Yeah. And the life that I have in God is forever. So, whom shall I fear? Yeah. Whom Who? shall I fear? You know? And there was me and mom, we always have these <laughs> sometimes peaceful discussions at the table. <laughs> sometimes not. <laughs> but um, sometimes I get heated. Um, but we were talking about, you know, again, they're talking about what's going on with this and what's going, what is, what is this person saying or that person, da, 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 da. and I thought to myself, cause they were like, so many people are doing things, they're doing things behind the scenes that you don't see. And I thought to myself, people are doing so much to try and win over a temporary space. This is not our permanent home. And they're really, really doing a whole lot for a temporary situation you know <laughs> and so it's just like you can't really stress too much about it because this is a temporary situation anyway and be thankful for each and every step each and every step i am so thankful for each and every step i think after i had my double stroke i became thankful for every step because mm. i don't know yeah I nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is promised. guaranteed. And it's not pro so I thank him for each and every step, each and every breath. I thank him. Amen. Amen. And with that being said, I also do want to put a special prayer out to Puerto Rico. I'm not sure if you guys saw that they had a major mm. earthquake happen um, oh, man. down there today, this morning. It's five point five. Um, size earthquake that has happened, and, and you know, Puerto Rico has had has been hit pretty hard over the last few years. Hurricanes and all kinds of things. So their infrastructure already been hit really hard, and then of course dealing with the coronavirus and this. So definitely praying for 
um, the families that are there and the people who, because I've met people who are from Puerto Rico who have family members down there, so are praying for them and, you know, they can't, they can't be with their family members who are, you know, going through something um, just of even more extreme than, yeah. than most right now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm. Definitely. Wow. We'll definitely lift them up. Um, and I think for our listeners too, if you could, you know, <clears throat> as Kiara shared with us, and definitely as you hear the different things like that, if lending someone some of your strength is to just lift them up in prayer and giving them up, then that yes, that's how we do it. That's that's what we do because we are called. Yeah. When we're called, we just step up and do it. Do it. You just know? do it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, oh, and I just I know I started to I my rambling. But when I was this morning that devotional how they talked about what's sitting on the the seat, the throne of your heart. I thought about the fact that, you know, I've had several well, there's a situation in my life that I kept talking about, kept talking about, kept talking about and the one day and that had to be the Holy Spirit, I said to you, I was like I'm not going to keep talking about that. I'm just going to say, you know, pray about it. I'm not going to keep talking about it because it's not really changing anything talking about it. And what I was doing was taking that off the throne. And recognize, and me not even knowing, recognizing that God is bigger than this. Mm -hmm. So instead of me focusing on this and letting this sit here and have reign and dominion over my life, I think I'm going to let God into it. And again, as a go with us, please. My prayer this morning. Really like, what is your prayer for the morning? God, go with me. Be with me. Stay with me. Just go with me. Show up. Um, there's another in the fire. That's the song that came out yesterday. I don't know if it's an older song by Hillsong. Another in the fire. And the song was about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were like, there's another oh, in yeah, the fire. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that, and it was really personal, and I was like, wow, and I wrote down, I said, what's on the throne, it's not a couch or a love seat, whatever you worry about or focus on is what's sitting on the throne of your heart, and that is what you are worshiping. David never said Goliath's name or spoke about how big he was. He, he just was focused on God on how big his God was so yes good things good yes, things so it was yes. like a lot of good and our with our business we had a lot of good movement like God is really like doing some awesome amazing things I had a situation last week where it looked like there was there was um some stuff that I had applied for and I had been approved but then they were like oh we didn't hear back from you and um they were sending messages to an old work email well, I had sent myself the approval letter back then to my personal email. Didn't even know. I wasn't even looking for it. I was actually looking to go back to the email the lady had sent. And the letter popped up that they had sent me that placed me back into the running for And I was just like, God is so good. But he's been showing up in different ways. Yes, he has. All over the place. That's why I'm like, I'm just like excited and expectant. Um, he's really, really moving. And so, lots of new music. Yeah. Do you guys have a song or two that you would like to share? Kiara? Um, well, I was listening to The Anointed CD this week. Oh, um, I love that CD. absolutely love that CD. We grew up listening to it. It's got so much just awesome, beautiful, uplifting um, music on it. Yes. And... I think that the song um, that I'm going to pick this week with <coughs> all of my great options <laughs> probably be, um, I'm going to go with, it's a tie up for me between It's a Matter of Love by Anointed and um, Gotta Love It by Anointed. I know both of them have love in it, but <laughs> really good. If you've not listened to um, to their CD, you really should. Yeah, I'll um, put the call on here. Just great, great, great songs all yeah. across the board. 
Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Timeless CD. Mm -hmm. mm. Send Out a Prayer is like my favorite mm -hmm. off that album. So, yeah, but, Send Out a Prayer is awesome. Um, the other one that I liked when I was going through this stuff is It's in God's Hands it's Now. It's in God's Hands Now. Oh, yeah. 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 If you're married and you're going through something, yes. um, remembering that God is in your relationship oh, with you as you're walking through. Yeah. Beautiful song. That song. That song. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I, I, that's way back. God really walked me through some things with the with the call, the anointed. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he's real. He's real. That's all I can say. Yes. So which one do you want us to listen to today, sis? It's a matter of love. It's okay. a matter of love. It's a matter of love. And what we'll do if is... my labor is so good, too. Sorry, go ahead. Don't look up Oh, if my labor is really good. Um, but we're going to get into... It's a matter of love, but we'll link in the description the the um, link for The Call, which is the name of the album by Anointed. Dope album. It's an older album, but the songs are timeless. So we will be back shortly. Yes. I love, love that it. album. Love, love, love that album. So yes. definitely, guys, check that out. Thank you, Cece. Good one. We have another one? I oh, thought we're we were doing, doing one. one. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I, I did one, but I also was obviously the entire CD. I recommend. Yes, so, that's what we're putting in the description. Good music that, you know, it's just really need you emotionally in so many different places, definitely check out that Amen. 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 Well, Tracy? Go ahead, Mom. She's about to steal my song, y'all. Go ahead, Mom. <laughs> I gave her the song. Okay? I'm like, Mom, come listen to this cover by Tone 6. She was like, what's the name of that song? I was like, uh-uh. I said, are you going to try and go before me when we do songs? we be like, oh, but my song of the day is the song of the day. <laughs> I won't do it. No, you can because I, I have a no, different no, song. I'm not going to do it. I'm you can. It. I have a different song. It's actually a song that I did before, but. No, you go on. I'm, what, seriously. <laughs> I, um, the song that I picked is a song by Tony Evans. And the reason why I picked this song, I just heard him talk about, it was him and Priscilla, um, they were doing a, um, a session, and um, he was talking about when he first sang this song, and it was about a year ago, um, and on the day that he was singing it, I guess it was, they were singing it at some presentation for their dad. Okay. And um, he, you know, he got up and he sang it, and his mom said to to him, because after that they went with their mom to um, find out a diagnosis oh. that had just been sent in, and his mom had said, and I don't know whether it was before or after that that song she said that song was for me for us um and um it made me look at the song differently um what's the name of the song the song is called fighting for us by tony evans fighting for us so we're going to listen to fighting for us by tony evans and again the link will be in the description be right back Men. that was amazing Men. That song. Hmm. That song makes me think of how I feel for my children. Yeah. I'm always fighting for my children. In my walk, I'm fighting. Hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, so, uh, I I did not, I'm not, I didn't pick the Tone 6 song. I'll play that one next week, maybe. It's a really cool song. It's really fresh and clean. But the song that I could not stop singing yesterday was a song that 
I had mentioned before, I think it like maybe week three or two, but I didn't play it. I just linked it in the bio. But I kept singing it this week, and I don't know if you heard me singing it. Even when I wasn't playing it, in between the songs I was singing, I kept singing, No one ever cared for me like Jesus. So I'm going to listen to Stephanie Gretzinger, No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. This song has been echoing in my heart all week. Amen. Um, so we'll link it in the bio, and we'll be right back. Amen. 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 So... <clears throat> A little different for <laughs> me this week. Yeah. But yeah, that one. I just found myself walking around humming it. Like, mm. you know. Mm. Calming your spirit and easing your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yes. Alright, so. Yeah. The message. Now, I have a bunch of songs. And I, at first, I was like, I'll link them in the Bible. But I'm like, no, I'll just wait and. I can, if it's the song of next week, I can share it next week. If not, then I'll slowly link it because, you know, Jonathan McReynolds just dropped the visual album a couple weeks ago. And did we do one of his songs before? We did, Moving On. Mm -hmm. Moving On when um, we Will was on the show. Right, and we did the limp thing. The limp, but the limp is off of a previous LP. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, he has a bunch of really cool little videos to go with the songs that he just released so i've been listening to some of his stuff and then hill song has been like coming out swinging which they've been you know pretty popular for a while anyway um and i think i will link though in the bio that breathe again by house fires and chandler moore that one and chandler moore he just something about his voice is so like pure and true it's just him like same with stephanie and a lot of tony evans even their voice is just very pure and you can tell it's just the true spirit of god just glowing on them mm -hmm. um even with the clark sisters because they talked about it they said when we would sing and do all kinds of vocal acrobatics and we'll be like oh we got to do that again next time mm -hmm. and nobody could remember the notes nobody and she was like because i was the holy spirit showing mm -hmm. up and showing out yeah. Um, so we will link a few, maybe a few more songs in the bio, but we are going to get into a message by Dr. Darius Daniels, yes. week two of his series on heart attack. Are you having a heart attack? Um, and Dr. Darius Daniels, much like how I always say, I like how the different styles of you know, him, Pastor Michael Todd, Pastor Stephen Furtick, Sarah Jakes Roberts, even yeah. T.D. Jakes, Creflo, Pastor Robert Morris, Pastor John K. Jenkins, yes. put some respect on it, FBCG. <laughs> um, but all of them have their own style and whatever it is that God has them pinpointed on, whether it be diving into what the culture was like at that time and... Um, or different words, the meaning of certain words, and breaking those apart. Some of them are visual. They'll give you visuals. Whatever it is that he has them, that is how God is using them, which is so awesome. So um, I hope you guys get a chance to watch the message, and I hope that you enjoyed um, tuning in this week. And we are going to close out in prayer. Now, next week is my birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> So I was like, two live videos already about her birthday because she gave her gifts. Yes, my sissy has already given me two gifts, two awesome gifts. And I will probably, uh, the link for the one with the time capsule, I will share in the series of videos and stuff. So if you guys want to see, because she got me a really cool 80s time capsule. I was born in the 80s. That's all you need to know. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Listen, <sighs> I found a picture of my mom today on Facebook standing on the stairs at our old house in Maryland. And um, I was like, this picture is of my mom when she was younger than I am right now. <gasps> oh, <God. laughs> she had many, many children at this time. All right. But it's a blessing. Every every breath is a gift of grace, and I appreciate it. So, who would like to close out in prayer today, ladies? Anyone?
Kiara. Oh, All right, take it away. All right, well, God, thank you so much for the time that you've given us today, and thank you for providing us with some great things to share with our audience uh, that's listening this week. We just ask that you please just place your hand on our audience listeners, my friends, and their family. We thank you for your hand of protection over us, and we also, God, just thank you for the blessing that you have planned for us this week. We know that you're in control of everything, and we're so thankful for that. Um, thank you for the revelations that you're going to share to us this week and for being us through any trial that we do face. This world definitely does throw trial at us, but you're always there with us. So thank you for that reminder that you have provided us with the gifts of love, of power, of sound mind, that you provide us with enough grace in each day for the, the mistakes that we are bound to make. Uh, so we're just thankful that you are a, a graceful and loving God through it all. So thank you. thank you for giving us the words to speak and the demeanor to have as we walk through this week and going before us and being an advocate for us as well. Um, especially you know, dealing with children and friends and family and all the things that are going to come up. We just thank you, God, for being there with us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 You guys have an awesome week, and yes. we will see you next. Well, we won't see you, but you'll hear us next week. <laughs> Love okay, you guys. My daughter's Dominion book is like on its way. By the way. So hey. Don't have a yet, readers. Definitely. Check it out. You gotta support the people who are doing good stuff, and you're definitely doing that. Yes. 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 And. We'll put all those links in the bio. We love you guys. Have a great week.